we started getting our sea legs back, and I guess as far as trails go, this was probably the ideal way to uh, to start the season and get back into the swing of things. We also started to see in a few sections that the, there was still some snow. You could also get the sense that uh, the weather would really change how this ride would play out. It was a beautiful sunny day and it hadn't Girl. really rained in a while, but I could see that if you, uh, if you were trying to do the route we were doing after four or five days of solid downpour, uh, this would be a real challenge, especially on the bigger bikes, and we probably would have opted to go for the uh, intermediate route at that point. To go. Our little warm-up trail lasted a little less than five minutes, and then we were back on our dirt road. The dirt road eventually dumped us out onto some two-lane blacktop, and from there we had about 12-13 uh, minutes to go until we got to our next trail. In this case, the road didn't actually take us to a trailhead. It actually dumped us off onto a gravel road, and then the gravel road basically just continued to deteriorate until it turned into a trail. During the morning briefing, it had been mentioned that at some point we would come to a fallen log. When we finally arrived at the log, we, we could clearly see that we were going to have to lift our bikes over this. It was actually a welcome little stop because Chris also had to pee real bad. Henrik came up to me and mentioned that he was finding the pace a little fast for him. He was extremely rusty as the previous year he had barely ridden at all. Now what was interesting here is between our group and another group that showed up, we had about 20 bikes to get over this log. And here we were, most of us total strangers to each other, and with pretty much nothing being said, everybody just jumped in and started hoisting bikes, and in a few short minutes, the whole thing was over. And I think this just shows you uh, the kind of interesting people that you meet when you get into this dual sport riding. You tend to meet people who uh, aren't afraid to uh, put their shoulder to the wheel and aren't blind, which is always nice. Now, when it comes time for a bunch of strangers to lift everybody's bikes over a fallen log, that's where being the guy with the 500-pound uh, F800GS makes you quite popular. Now, the bad news. After our success at the fallen tree, we all uh, got back in the saddle and headed back down the trail. Oddly enough, this was really the only spot in the entire day where we really encountered this much snow. We didn't complete the full route, so there might have been some other spots that we didn't see. But at least for us, this was really the only area where we were snowmobiling. Now, this ride was at the end of April, and in this part of the country, at the end of April, you never really know what you're going to get. Sometimes it can be very summer-like, sometimes we can still have snow falling. Um, lately, I've noticed that the Class C tends to be run a couple of weeks later in the season, and that uh, increases your odds of having better uh, trail conditions. After a really nice section of trail, we ended up back on a dirt road. Eventually, the kind of country road, cottage road, opened up into a hydro line. This looks amazing. The hydro line was fun. It was a bit mucky in sections, and there was one decent little water crossing. And Mark was nice enough to set up his video camera and get some shots of us crossing. And now I'll shut up for a while, and you can uh, just ride along with us. <laughs> 